Once again, it is my pleasure to be with you tonight. Uh, I want to thank everybody that uh, has had a part in the meals that I've partaken in. Uh, I believe every night you want me to preach shorter so you feed me more. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6. I come from a little town called Rock Mills, Alabama. I told you that last night. Rock Mills is known for its cotton mill. There's a cotton mill that sits out on a big old rock, and it's got a big old water wheel that goes around. And as Brother Pet was talking a few minutes ago about the farmers, I was thinking about how these farmers are in critical condition right now. Uh, I know what that's like. I, I am a bi- bi- bivocational preacher. But again, I'm full-time, and I'll, Brother Pet, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I work for the Alabama Farmers Federation, which is an insurance company, kind of like Farm Bureau in Georgia. Uh, that's what I do during the week, and somebody said, Preacher, how can, you, how can you sell insurance and be a preacher at the same time? I said, well, that's easy. I sell fire insurance Monday through Friday and give it away on Sunday. <laughs> <clears throat> but also Alpha, Alabama Farmers Federation is, one, is the number one insurer of churches in the state of Alabama. We're the number one insurer. And, and in my county, uh, several years ago, I, I, had to, we had to, I don't know if you've heard about it, but in Alabama there was a lot of church burnings. There was a lot of churches that were set on fire, and set on fire intentionally. I think there was like eight of them, or ten of them. Eight of them we had insured. I told you we was the largest church insurer. And what they had me to do is part of my job is I would have to call the churches. And uh, me being a pastor, that was pretty easy. I, I kind of knew everybody, a lot of the people that were in the churches. But something broke my heart, church, when I started calling around. What I had to do is I had to call the churches. And I had a long survey sheet that I had to go through. And, and I had to, to list some things and to kind of make sure that they were in right and in line. And one of the questions was, and I remember this, is there a, uh, uh, do y'all have a school? Do you have a nursery? And y'all got a daycare? We had to ask those questions for liability purposes. One of the questions was, do you handle snakes? Had to, had to ask that. Uh, one of the questions was, you know, it went several, do, do you have a, uh, uh, a sports team and several things that would, would cause liability purposes. But the one question, church, that broke my heart was what's your attendance on Sunday morning? What is your membership? And, church, you're blessed. New Vision Church, you're blessed. My church at Liberty Grove, we're blessed. Out of 10 or 15 churches I called, the average attendance was less than 20, Brother Pitt. Less than 20. And I don't know, I, there was something that was overwhelming me that I, I, as I was looking there and, and as I was talking to these people. One church says, Brother Greg, we have church once a month. And we have about five. And, he, and then I talked to the other two churches and says, well, we join up with that church and, because we don't have enough. And, 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 there's, and in one of the community up there, there, there's four churches in the community, and they have church, one service this month at this church and one at that month and that month before they can keep their doors open of the church. As I rode through Alma today, I, I got out and rode a little bit, and I think about this, this little community is no different than mine. A couple of years ago, I, up around our area is known for cotton mills. I told you my little town's got a cotton mill in it. There's one in West Point, Georgia. I live right on the line in West Point, and there's a West Point uh, cotton mill, and it looks like a ghost town. You ride down there, and, and, it, and, and the, I seen an aerial photo several years ago, and when the cotton mill was in uh, full production, how, how there was the big cotton mill here, and on the other side of the road was the mill village. Anybody know what a mill village is? Have you ever heard of Mill Village? What would happen is at, at, at 2 o'clock you would hear that big whistle blow and, 
you'd see hundreds, literally hundreds of people walk across the road to the mill village, and you'd see hundreds of people coming in, coming to the second shift. It was a little village, a little community. That one mill in, in West Point, Georgia is one mile long. It's one mile of solid brick and building, one mile long. They're tearing it down. It's going away. You know, we know all of our jobs have been outsourced to Mexico and different places like that. But I got to thinking about that, and as I took the survey on the churches, I got to thinking about, is churches today going out of business? Are we going out of business when we talk about our Christianity? God's not going out of business, church. I believe it's us that's going out of business. God didn't take nothing, God hadn't took anything away. His Holy Spirit and His power is still strong today, but yet we've quit. I passed a, a marquee coming down the road. I, I think I was with you, Brother Pitt. The sign says, man won't work, won't eat, don't eat. We live in a, we live in a nation that, that we're all rewarded for not working. You can say amen right there. But as Christians, our job is to be Christians. Amen. Let's take a look at our scriptures tonight. 2 Kings chapter number 6. If you will, please stand for the reading of God's word tonight. I want to read the, the first seven verses uh, in this chapter. And the Bible reads like this. And the son of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. And that word straight means small. It says, Let us, I pray thee, unto, uh, unto Jordan. Let us go, I pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they had came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, Alas, Master, it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and, and he cut down a stick, and he cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it, up, take it up to thee, and he put out his hand, and he took it. Let's pray. Father, uh, Lord, I, I pray tonight, Lord, for your help. And Father, I pray, Lord, tonight that you'll put us back in business. Father, I pray, Lord, if, if somewhere, somewhere along the way that we've, we've just quit or give up or, or just tired, dear God, Lord, I pray that you'd revive us and energize us, dear God, Lord, to to be about your business, Father, always. Help us, Father, to understand that we live in a lost and dying world and, and Father, there's folks dropping off in the pits of hell as I'm preaching right now. Father, we know that there's people out there that are hurting and are afflicted, dear God, Lord, that need somebody to come along and show them your love. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, for every soul that's under the sound of my voice tonight that you would speak to them. Some way, somehow, Father, Lord, you'd speak to every person in this room, Father. Father, for I'm convinced, Lord, that we all need revival. There, uh, there's something that we all need to draw closer to you in. Every one of us, Father, there, there's something, that, Lord, that we need. And Father, I pray, Lord, tonight you would supply that need to us. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace once again. Thank you for the hope that we find in, in your precious word. Thank you, Lord, for vision with us up to this point, dear God, Lord, and and Father, we expect nothing less tonight than, than your Holy Spirit to blow into this place and Lord, to fill this room. Father, I beg you, dear God. I beg you, dear God, to use me. I beg you, dear God, that I may decrease and you may increase. Father, I'm nothing without you, dear God. And Lord, I pray for your help. In Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, I want to give you the setting of the story. I want to give you the setting where we're at. The setting is that they're building a place to, uh, to have a place to, for the sons of the prophets can go and be trained in the work of the ministry. 
And while out there doing the work and while out there busy cutting down wood, I, I, how many putt wooders we got in here? Well, my church is full of loggers. Brother Pat met some of them. That's pretty tough work, isn't it? These, these, these some of the prophets were out there and they were going over to, to, to build a place and, and they asked Elijah and they got the blessings of Elisha. They was going over to build a place and, and we see that they were doing a the work and they were out there cutting wood with an axe. How many have ever cut wood with an axe? Pretty good exercise, isn't it? But as they were cutting wood and while the young men were out there faithful doing the work, we see a picture here uh, of some young men that were faithfully doing the work. I mean, faithfully out there swinging that axe. They didn't have a steel sh chainsaw. Uh, they didn't have one of Jerry Clower's lightweight McCullough chainsaws either. They had an axe. They had, they had a manual labor that they were out there working hard to build a place. And it's why they were out there working so hard they lost the axe head, as the story reads. They lost it. The axe head tonight represents the power that they had. They lost the axe head. They lost their, their strength. They lost their ability uh, to perform the task. They lost the main key to what, how was, how, what was cutting wood. And they lost it. The axe head was the power. To you and I tonight, the power is God. Amen. Our power is God. You see, folks, you and I, myself, as I stand behind this pulpit, as Brother Pitt stands behind the pulpit Sunday after Sunday, as the, the musicians and the choir, whatever we do, and sis, that song you sang was wonderful tonight. Uh, God bless you. Well, we can stand up here and murmur words all we want to, but if that's all we do, that's all it is, is words, amen. It's not worship. And without God Almighty in our services, without God showing up in here tonight, we're not going to have revival. Amen. We're not going to have we're not going to have a prayer our prayers answered if we don't have God in the middle of it. If we lose God, our power we are powerless people. I believe today in America we're trying to lose God. God's not going anywhere. It's going to be us shoved into the corner. Without the power of God, we're powerless. But hold on. Let me show you something here. We're in revival tonight. Amen? I, I, believe, I believe with all my heart that revival is for the church. Revival means to revive or bring back that which was gone. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Brother Pitt said, Brother Pitt said it best last night to me uh, and, and my church. We've been in revival. My church has been in revival. And, and I've been hearing good things about here. Y'all have been in revival. Folks, stay in revival. Amen? Let's stay in the power of God. We see here of a man that, that he, lost, he lost his axe head, but wait a minute, he got it back. I serve a God tonight that can restore. I serve a God tonight that can retrieve. I, I serve a God tonight that can put us back in business, folks. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I've, been, I've been accused up there at my church up in Alabama. I've had people say, Preacher, what are you trying to do? Fill the whole church up? And my answer is, Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, your church is no different from mine. Y'all got uh, carpet on, on y'all. Mine's wood. And I often tell my people, I said, This seat right here is reserved for the wood family. Nobody sat in the wood family. I'm going to tell you something tonight. And church, I, I, I'm not saying this in a bad way, Brother Pitt, but this place ought to be full. I'm going to tell you something. Tomorrow night at my church, my church will, will look something like this. There will be spaces out there, brother. There will be spaces out there. There's room for more in here, amen. And guess what happens when you, get, when you fill this up? Now, and I, ain't, I ain't trying to start nothing now. But if you fill it up, build a nothing. Amen right there. We ought to be constantly thinking about filling this one up. Oh, a happy day, happy day. I want to tell you something. In my church, we've got a problem, Brother Pitt. We built a we're in the process of building a church now, and, and God's blessing, and God's moving. We hadn't borrowed a dime yet. Hallelujah. We're paying for this. God allows. I ain't bragging on us. I'm bragging on Jesus. Amen. We didn't know how we was going to do it. 
But we got a problem. We're outgrowing what we've already built. That's God now. We built some Sunday school rooms because, and our real need was Sunday school rooms, and we built them, and we're sitting there scratching our head. Our young adult class uh, from, from 20 to 40, uh, uh, we built a room, and we, we, we built it. And then we says, hey, wait a minute. In, in the two years that we've been building, our, our young adult Sunday school class has doubled, and we're scratching our head and saying, we done built it. It's too little already. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I serve a great, mighty God. Amen. One of my, some of my deacons come to me and said, Preacher, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to have to build again. I said, let's just look and see first. <laughs> a building project can... I used to have a full head of hair. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, it was a little fuller than what it is. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. God can get in the middle of a building program, and so can the devil. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. The power, God, folks, we got to be in business. We, we've got to start thinking about the lost that's out there. We've got to start thinking about it. But, folks, what we do so many times, we get so settled in our ways, and we get so comfortable on a church pew. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. I had a lady, I had a lady that, that, that she don't go to the church no more. You're taping this, right? <laughs> Just keep it down here. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is truth. This is the gospel. And they said, brother, we don't want to grow no more. we got enough. Oh, my stars. We don't ever have enough of the kingdom. My Bible tells me hell has, to, has enlarged herself because we're going out of business. That's scriptural, amen? Folks, we need to think about getting, getting God back. Uh, we need to start... There's an old preacher I had one time preaching the Bible. An old brother, he'd preach. And then he said, he said, Oh, Lord. He said, Lord. He said, set me on fire. Set me on fire with the Holy Ghost. He said, folks, if you'll get on fire, people will come from miles around to watch us burn. Hey, man, you start something. You start a stir down here at New Vision. You start a stir. I'm going to tell you something. You get, you, get some, you get some teenagers on fire for God. Some of that singing right there. Yeah, you get somebody saved and on fire for God. I'm going to tell you something. You strike a match, and you'll see, uh, you'll see what something, uh, uh, how, how your blaze can burn. If you just strike a few men that I've heard Brother Pitt say, this son got on fire in the church. You strike a fire in this place. You strike a fire this weekend revival, and you get people that, that's on fire for God. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. New vision will be in a business like you ain't ever seen before. Amen. Folks, we need back in business. We need to be back in business for the God Almighty. Folks, we need to start thinking about knocking walls out and pushing it sideways. And you say, oh, Brother Greg, I, that's going to cause trouble. I, that's going to cost money. And, I, and I, whew, I'm going to tell you something. God said, he didn't say the work would be easy. But he said it's worth it, amen. What's the worth of one soul? What's, how mo, folks, I'm, I, don't know, I, don't know who, I don't know who the next person will be in this place is saved, but I'm going to tell you something. Everything that you do, every effort that you put into it is worth it all, amen. It's worth it. Who knows, uh, by you being open and you being in business, you may raise up another Billy Graham out of this church, Amen. You may raise up a, a soul winner that will go out there out of this church and out of this ministry and save thousands, amen. But folks, we've got to be in business. The devil wants nothing more than to put us out of business. I want to look at five things that will put God's people back in business. You've got to remember this. The devil wants you out of business. The world wants you out of business. Our country, it looks like, wants us out of business. And our state wants us out. Oh, Alabama, Alabama, they, they, want our, they want our state out of business. Oh, Roy Moore, they didn't, they didn't told him he couldn't put the Ten Commandments up. I'm going to tell you something. Every person wants the church out of business. If they can silence us, uh, I'm going to try not to run a rabbit tonight, but you remember old John the Baptist? You remember when he was over there in prison? You know what they did with him, don't you? They beheaded John the Baptist. They wanted him silent. I believe he was a leather lung preacher that went out and said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is this day. Folks, I, I believe tonight we need to be out there from the rooftops shouting, Repent, 
Folks, we, we, we've let people get off too easy with their sin. Uh, we started uh, getting up cozy up beside sin and, and turning a blind eye to sin. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're not doing any people any good by turning a blind eye to sin. Amen. We're not doing any good by, by calling it an alternate lifestyle when it's really an abomination. Amen. We're not doing anybody any favors when we talk about it's choice and when it's actually the true meaning is murder. Amen. Folks, let's get real what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you something. You can hate sin, love the sinner. I'm going to tell you something. You can preach the whole counsel of God from Genesis to Revelation, and you can, you can preach it, you can preach it right, and you can preach it straight. But I'm going to tell you something. You've got to preach it with love as well. Amen. You've got to preach it with love. I, I believe tonight if, if, we, if we put Jesus back in our churches and we put Jesus uh, uh, back in our pulpits, and I believe you've got a godly man right here. I, I believe that with all my heart. I believe that. I believe he loves you. I believe he loves God. And I believe he loves the church. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. We need to love people too. We don't need to just love our... This, this is not our little cl country club that we come to on Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Amen. Come on, stay with me. This is a place that we need to be back in business. I'm going to tell you something, I see our cotton mills going out of business every day. I'm going to tell you something, I'd like to see that big old white smoke come out of them stacks again. I'd like to see that big old water wheel start to go again. I'd like to see that whistle blow at 2 o'clock and thousands of people come out and thousands of people come in. I'd like to see them big semi-trucks back up again and rolling the product out. I want to tell you something, folks, what's the product that we're rolling out of our churches today? you got to put product in to get product out. Amen? you got to put prayer in to get people saved. Amen? you got to put some time and anointing. you got to put some uh, time on your knees to get people th changed. Amen? You say, well, I ain't, we, ain't get, we ain't seen nobody saved. When have you preached? My, my wife sent a text a while ago. Uh, she knew exactly what I needed. Bless her heart. She says, trying to hear from God... With your Bible closed, it's like trying to read your text with your phone off. <laughs> I, said, I said, Mama knows what I needed. <laughs> Amen. Folks, we got to put in to get out. Five things that'll put us back in business. I want to read these five things according to what the scripture says about this young man that lost his axe head. Remember the axe head was the power. The axe head was what was the key player in cutting that wood down. The Bible says, I, I believe that we need to understand that there was a, the number one, number one thing to put us back in business is we need to understand that there's a work that needed to be done. The scripture says that he, he, he came, the, the son of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold, the place where we dwell is too straight for us. It's too small. Well, what he said was is, he said, we're getting cramped up. He said, we need to expand. We need to get further. We need to build out further uh, for, for the kingdom. We need to go out. Elisha said, Go. This young prophet, they understood that there is a work to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, in the woods, they were doing a work. Now, the Bible didn't say they were going over there in them woods sitting around and said, I wish these trees would fall. You know, we could go out there all day long and we could come in church and we could say, Well, I hope somebody gets saved today. Well, I hope somebody gets saved today. Brother Pitt, I hope somebody testify. I don't know if y'all have them. Every now and then we'll have just a testimony meeting. I won't say a word. My wife did make a mistake one day, though. She sent out our email reminders. She said, it's one of the best services we've been in. Greg didn't even get to preach. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I agree with what you said. But the way you said it, some of my buddies said, hey, your wife don't even like your preaching. <laughs> but folks... We can't wish someone into heaven. I believe we've got to be on our knees. I believe we've got to be out there loving people. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. I don't, I, I, I've won, I, we, Brother Pet, we've won people over a men's breakfast. 
I, I've won them over bacon and eggs. They would have never come into church if it wasn't for that. I've won, I've won people over a hot dog supper. I've won them over popping popcorn. I'm going to tell you something, folks. We need to get them in here first. We need to start praying, God, send us somebody. God, raise up some kids that will sing like this lady. God, raise us up some teenagers that would rather be in church on a Tuesday night than, than off with their friends on Tuesday night. I'm going to tell you, this road right here has been here every night. I don't know these kids, but God bless them, amen. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. You need to invest in these kids right here because they're watching what you do. They're watching how you work. They're watching how you pray. They're watching how you do church. And they'll do church just like you. Are you happy? God help us. That's an amen or oh me. This man realized that there was a work that had to be done. The most important work on this planet today, the most important work on this planet today is the work of God. Amen. amen. Christian soldiers, are you in business today? Are you in business? This man noticed it was a needed work. It was an important work. It's an unnecessary work. Today, uh, serving God is an important work. It's, it's, a, it's a needed work and it's a necessary work. What makes this work so great? Because it involves people. That people might be reached. I've used this illustration several times. My prayer list is long and lengthy about cancer. I want her today. My, my, little, my, my little boy's got a peanut allergy. My little boy cannot. He can't have peanuts. I mean, we've got so many. We've got so many minutes to get that shot into his leg. Then we've got so many minutes to get him to the hospital. My little boy's five years old. You pray for him. It scares me to death. I almost got him at home right now. This summer he'll go to... This fall he'll go to school. I don't want some little boy to bring him a peanut butter cookie. They say next year they're coming out, they're coming out with something that, that peanut allergy is going to be a thing of the past. I hope they're right. I hope they're right. But let me ask you something, church. If you, had, if you knew you were the person that held the key and you had the cure for cancer. I know there's several probably in here that has had cancer and they're cancer free now. But if you had the key, you had the right antidote, you had the right doctor, you knew the right hospital, and, and, and that doctor or that hospital cured you, what would you do tomorrow? Would you call every person that you know that had cancer and say, listen, there's a doctor over there in Jacksonville. There's a hospital over there that's got the cure to cancer. They cured me. I'm cancer free. You need to go there. Sure you would. There's a Jesus that washed my sins away. That took me out of a devil's hell. That cleaned my life up. And yet we won't pick up the phone and say, Do you love Jesus? Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how Jesus changed my life. Let me tell you what Jesus done. Let me tell you what he done for my boy and my girl. Let me tell you what Jesus done for my family. He put my family back together again. Let me just tell you, how many times do we do that, folks? Well, they'll go to church. There's church on every corner. If they want, if they want something, they can go get it. Is that our attitude, folks? Is that our attitude? Well, I, I'm saved. And I, I know what the Lord done for me, but you know what? They know where the church is. <laughs> there, there's some people that's missing here tonight, and I know for different reasons for working. And some people have gone to the pig show, but I, I want to ask you something, folks. Sunday after Sunday, I, don't, I, I know your pastor does, but, but, but Sunday after Sunday, the person that sits beside you, if they're out, does it concern you? Does it bother you? What about people that had not been here in six months? Does it bother you? Have you called them? I know some people that I talked to, and I, and I knew they were in church, and not in my church, and, and, and other churches, and, and, and I just kind of know that they're out of church and out of the will of God, and I'll talk to them. I'll say, hey, hey, wh 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 what about your relationship? Are you still going to church? Nope. I said, well, hey, you need to get back. Now, I'm not out there proselyting, Brother Pitt. I, if they go to the church down the road, if that's where they can get fed, go to the church down the road. Last time I checked, we're on the same team, amen. 
If you ain't going to come to my church, go to some church. Amen? But I'll say, they'll come, they say something like, you know what? I've been gone from that church six months. Ain't the first person called me. And I'm going to tell you something. That, that street runs both ways too. But shame on us. Because we didn't have enough care about if they're gone or not. I had a person one time say this. I had a lady in my church say this. We didn't ask them to leave, and we're not asking them to come back. Help us, Lord. People don't care how much you know, they know how much you care. We're in the business. We're in God business. We're not in the we're not in the Liberty Grove business. We're not uh, in, in the New Vision business. We're in the God business. Amen. We're in the souls business and the saving business. This man, he said that he noticed that he got back in vision because he'd understood there was a work to be done. I'm glad that somebody, when this, when this old boy came along, I'm glad there was somebody over there in Faith Baptist Church a long time ago that they were swinging a big axe. They were swinging a big axe of prayer. I'm glad I had a praying grandma and that I'm going to tell you something, that when I'd go spend a night with her, she'd have a little old pulpit right there with a big old family altar Bible on it, and she'd scare me to death at night. I'd look in there and Momo would be swaying. She'd be swaying in that big old gown, and she'd be saying, Oh, God, oh, God, pray. She'd be praying, and I, I didn't know what she was praying for brother but she was praying for me amen she was swinging an axe for me amen. Amen. she was swinging an axe for me who are you swinging an axe for and is your axe sharp thank God there was somebody in the work that said hey there's a little my little grandson needs to be saved I thank God that there were some men that come around on a bus ministry. My mom and daddy, they didn't send, they didn't take me to church. They sent me to church. There's an old, there was a guy come by. It was a big old long school bus. I can still smell the inside of that old school bus today. He said, hey, man, he come to my church a while, but, it, but he said, he said, Greg was so little. Y'all don't believe it, do you? He said, he was so little when I started coming and getting him, I'd get out and he couldn't reach that first step of that big old bus. And he said, I'd put him on that bus. You know what that man was doing? He wasn't a preacher. He wasn't a Sunday school teacher. But he drove a bus and he cared about kids and he was swinging an axe. He was swinging an axe for me. Hallelujah. He was swinging an axe. He said, There's, he said this boy needs Jesus. He didn't, have, he didn't have no interest in me, my family, but he, he had an interest in my soul. Amen. I'm glad somebody was in business. I'm glad there's still singers in the business singing for God and, and singing for Him. Amen. God can use a person in his business to reach other people. Number two. I got five. Oh, it's getting late. Can I preach a while now? Y'all, it's been five years since I've been here. I'm going to just give it all to you now. Number two, I believe it will put, put, put us back in business. And number one, there was a work that needed to be done. Number two, there was some equipment that needed to be used. Verse four said he was cutting down wood. These men needed something to cut wood down. They needed something to make it, their job effective. Folks, they didn't go out there with a hickory. Y'all know what a hickory is? Huh? Anybody ever had a hickory? Some of you look at me as funny. A hickory is that little stick that your mama used to whip you with. <laughs> they wasn't out there hitting that big old tree with a hickory and trying to get it to come down. They needed some tools to get the job done. They needed some equipment they needed something to use. And folks, I'm going to tell you something tonight. There's some equipment that we can use to get our churches and get ourselves back in business. And here's one of them right here. The Word of God. The Bible says, now faith coming by hearing and hearing by what? The Word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 119, forever, I, forever thy what? Word is settled in heaven. The Bible says that this book is sharper than a two-edged sword. I'm going to tell you something. You want to get back in business? You want to get back? The, you want your church and your community and your life and your family to get back in business? What my wife said, you can't hear from God with a shut book. I'm going to tell you something. You want to hear from God? You start, you start getting in here. You start reading and studying. You start looking for the answers. 
You start praying. I want to tell you something. You start reading God's Word. I want to tell you something. You said, I ain't heard from God lately. Have you went to hear from God lately? It's just God's Word speaking to you. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. When I was first called to preach, I, when, I, when I realized I was called to preach, I, I didn't like this book. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I had to open it up just to do a little, uh, just a little, little occasional reading. And there comes messages rolling out. And I'd shut it. I'd get scared. I'd open it up. I'd read something else. And here come another message. And I'd get scared. And I'd shut it. I, 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 message was just coming. I didn't know what was happening. That's, that'll put us back in business. Number The second two we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you something. We're congregational Methodist. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, we build a church and, and, and the pew man said, what, now, now y'all, what denomination are y'all? I said, we're congregational Methodist. He said, oh, y'all them holiness Methodists, ain't you? <laughs> I don't know about holiness Methodist, but I believe in the Holy Spirit, amen? I believe in the Holy Ghost, amen? I believe in that comforter that he talked about, Amen? I, I believe in, in when, 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 the, when the Holy Spirit sweeps through like on the day of Pentecost. I, I believe that, the, that we can feel the Holy Ghost fill the place. Amen. Oh, I believe it. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you shall endure with power 